Okay, um, I'm sharing my screen. If everyone can hear and see what I'm sharing. Yes, yes. yes perfect. Okay, so um, good morning. My name is Christina Machado. I am uh, one of the librarians over at the Miami Dade College um, Hialeah campus. And today I'm joined with my colleague. Hello, my name is Angel Hernandez, and I am also a librarian at Miami Dade College North Campus. Okay. Um, and we today are presenting on um, the Humanities Edge undergraduate um, student program, uh, research program, sorry. And um, just to give a little bit of background on the uh, what Humanities Edge um, is. So Humanities Edge uh, is, a, is an academic and career development program for MDC to FIU transfer students, um, which are majoring in the humanities. Um, so this partnership between Miami-Dade College and FIU creates a rich academic experience uh, to help students maintain an interest in the humanities while supporting their transition to university. The program um, aims to show that the study of the humanities can provide the key to an interesting and rewarding life and career. Now, the Humanities Edge undergraduate research program specifically um, at Miami-Dade College uh, provides our undergraduate students the opportunity to complete independent student-led research under the guidance of a faculty mentor. Um, it's a pretty competitive program um, with the, and they, once they are selected uh, for the program, uh, the research teams, which are made up of one faculty member and one undergraduate uh, student, embarks on a 10-week um, research journey together. Now, in this, uh, we began this uh, program in the fall of, I'm sorry, the summer of 2020. Um, and that's also when they decided to also include librarians. So then we were added um, to those research teams as well. Um, I also wanted to kind of share a little bit about, um, you know, how how the program, um, I guess, developed a little bit more um, once we were involved in it. Um, so we were able to provide um, information literacy um, skill, or, or I'm sorry, uh, share information literacy um, skills with the students. Um, so throughout the process, they were also um, learning um, these vital skills and then adapting them to the research they were conducting, again, in the humanities. So um, part of our role, um, you know, it was a bunch of librarians that were recruited from various campuses at Miami-Dade College. I would say it was um, maybe about 10 librarians or so uh, in, in general. And so our role was really to provide uh, research support, as Christina said, uh, but also technical support and uploading assistance. You know, we really needed to find a, a standardized way to collect all of the different artifacts that students were creating. Um, you know, students were creating things like paintings, they were creating poems, timelines. It wasn't just, you know, traditional research papers that they were writing. Um, the vast majority did have some sort of writing aspect or, or an artistic statement. And so <clears throat> as librarians, <clears throat> excuse me, as librarians, our role really was to make sure that um, their research uh, was of high quality, that we helped them find the resources that they need, um, that, you know, their citations were correct, their formatting, you know, made sense. Uh, and basically, we, we helped them throughout the entire process. Uh, and we collaborated with the faculty um, in, in ensuring that the student was on task. Um, so we did set time, uh, you know, to meet with the students weekly and with the faculty to go over their project and address any kinds of concerns. Um, a lot of students you know, opted to do a video or to do some more technical things that we had to find, as you'll see, very creative solutions um, to embed on our website. Uh, and so a, lo a lot of that was also making sure that the content that they submitted was also ADA compliant, since it was going to be on the web. Uh, we wanted to make sure that everything was accessible. So whether it was a PDF or a Word document, we ran a, a variety of different accessibility checks to make sure that it was accessible. Yes, so, um, and as I had mentioned, um, we were brought into the project, um, I believe it was May of 2020 um, for that first uh, iteration of the, of the program. And um, when we first joined, we were tasked with kind of creating um, a place to actually host not only the symposium, but also the, 
the projects and the works that the students um, created. Um, this was already during um, you know, the pandemic. So we knew that this was going to be remote, um, we, but we weren't sure what it was gonna look like yet. So we did a lot of research. We saw what other institutions were doing. Um, and then out of that, we actually came out with um, two things. So in addition to our symposium lib guides that we've created, uh, one for each iteration of the program, um, which at this point have been three, um, we also ended up with a digital commons. And this digital commons, um, was created to pretty much become a repository where um, MDC students and uh, I'm sorry, MDC stu student and faculty research could be housed and showcased. Um, you know, students would have access to this, uh, faculty could have access to this, um, and all the collections would be there um, to just showcase everything that's being worked on, um, especially now that everything was being done, you know, virtually or remote. Um, this was like a great opportunity to start collecting um, all, the, all of those artifacts. So over in collections, we went ahead and we have a number of our um, programs up already. And as you can see, um, you know, some of them were, uh, were still done in person, but a lot of them started becoming um, virtual. So we have the Humanities Edge Research Program Symposium links here. And that's where you, you'll see our summer um, version of it. Um, and it has developed over, oops, sorry. It has developed over um, the course of each um, symposium. So we have added a lot more um, interactions with students and the faculty teams. Um, we did have to find a way of organizing the information best. And I think that took a little time, um, but we ended up creating basically a, a homepage that would provide just information about the humanities edge. Um, it would also then serve as kind of like the landing page for the day of the symposium where um, people could go ahead or participants could go ahead and join. So for an example of that, you can look at our uh, upcoming one here for spring. So you'll see we have a big um, icon here where um, participants can go ahead and join. Uh, the agenda is listed. We have everything here in the welcome. And then the projects are then housed next. And this would this gave us an opportunity to really highlight the students, um, give a little bit of information about them. And then each one was provided with their own um, page for their projects. And this, this part, as you can see, I wanted to show you the other ones for a minute. Um, here we go. So each student had a page. Um, this was a little overwhelming just because of the sheer number of students, um, especially uh, this in this iteration, um, but it worked out really well. Uh, we were able to provide an abstract for the project. So the students provided the abstract and we were able to um, post it here. We then had any, um, any, artif any artifacts that they produced. So like Angel mentioned, some of them were videos, some of them were artworks, other ones were just presentations or research papers, um, but we were able to house all of it right here. Right, and as Christina um, you know, mentioned, you know, it, the librarians designed this. So we really had to step up our game uh, in terms of uh, understanding HTML because we did a lot of uh, interesting solutions to make some of this stuff work. You know, there were a lot of different challenges with the different types of artifacts that were sometimes submitted. Uh, you know, I had a student that, you know, created several paintings on an 11 by 16 canvas, you know, and that was like right during the time uh, when the pandemic hit. So it was very difficult for us to get, uh, you know, get a, a, an accurate picture or a scan of, of, um, of that work that had the correct fidelity um, that, that, you know, the student had drawn with the right colors and all of that. So, you know, this, the professor was very kind enough to drive all the way to the student's house. Uh, and, you know, they took the, the paintings and they were able to scan it on their, um, on their computer. But then we noticed that the scans were not, didn't work out so well. So then we also tried taking pictures with a high resolution camera. And then we also tried um, doing something called um, Adobe Scan. So we tried a variety of different things. Um, I think Labiba was was one of them, actually. If you scroll down, you're, you're right at the correct one. Yeah, see there her, yeah, her painting. Yeah, she was one of my students. Um, we actually ended up using a combination of, of all three technologies. You know, sometimes it looked best with black and white, sometimes it looked best with color. So point is that during this time, um, you know, having access to the internet and having access to a lip guide, really helped us to put all this stuff together in one place. Uh, and, you know, like I said, we just came up with creative solutions uh, to be able to embed all of the content that we had. Uh, and we actually collected the information 
Um, and all the artifacts through a form that we created, uh, it was a Microsoft form. And then the faculty member would upload that information. Uh, and that would also give it or empower the faculty member to have that kind of final say uh, and ensure that the, the, the submissions were of high quality. And just, um, I guess, to show a few of those examples of, of the variety of, of different um, projects that were produced, um, we have a few examples. Uh, here's another one that I think was particularly challenging, right, Angel, the timelines? Mm. Yeah, the timelines. Um, and, and it's very interesting. If you right click on that timeline, um, you should get an option to see the fr a frame. Uh, actually, click above the picture, like a little bit above, yeah, in the white space. Yeah, right click. Mm -hmm. uh, so click where it says view frame source. Actually, no, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Point. It, yeah, I, I, it, we embedded this thing. This was this was a challenge. So this was created on on Night Lab, which I I think is a fantastic tool. Allows you to create all sorts of uh, timelines. But it was difficult to embed into the into the LibGuide because it was not just like a website. Like there was some code behind it. And if you click on it, you see it's interactive. It's really really cool. Uh, and so we had to step up and learn a lot of different ways to do this kind of stuff. So yeah, this one was definitely a challenge, but we do have some other ones. Uh, we have some videos, some websites, if you want to show those. Yeah, um, um, let me do the, uh, we had a coloring book as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there was a presentation that was created as part of this uh, research paper and then the artwork, which is right here. Yes, nice. and, and this, this one was also one of my students. She was trying to um, create a coloring book to help students reduce stress through coloring. You know, adult coloring books have become like a, like a thing. Uh, so th I thought this one was really cool. But if you scroll up a little bit, um, I also wanted you guys to see the little widget that we created. If you click the, the blue. Yeah, so you see that little embedded uh, PDF thing that we made. That was also something that we just kind of coded in house to um, display whatever it is that the student had submitted, whether it was a PDF or Word document or PowerPoint. That's that's how we were able to display it seamlessly inside of the, the loop guides. Yeah, that way we didn't have to rely on this and then opening in a new page. It just opened right here on the on the lib guide. Right, and it became quite popular. I mm -hmm. think uh, if. Caitlin can attest to that. They used it in the in the tutoring symposium, uh, and you know we've been using these resources throughout the college, not just in in this uh, the Um This is another one. I maybe we should stop after this one, but um, this was a really great one too. Um, this student, this is one of I think the FIU students, right? Um, mm -hmm. He actually created um, a short film animation. And this was actually a really big hit. It was extremely well done. Um, so we were able to embed that right there for him as well. And the recording as, mm -hmm. as well. We tried to um, get all the Blackboard recordings and just embed them right into the page, which also was uh, an interesting technical feat, but it worked. Mm -hmm. OK, so um, in addition to all of this work, we also um, we also tried to provide students with a lot of um, uh, resources um, outside of our one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with the groups. We wanted to also um, provide them with additional information on how just to um, provide us the this the videos and everything so that we could then ultimately get them onto the LibGuide. So we wanted their help with that basically. Um, so I wanted to show you the first one. Yes, no, not this one, sorry. This one's fine. So under the resources, um, we actually went ahead and started um, with a few different um, documents just to help students um, with getting their videos or their presentations up on YouTube, um, how to help us make those ADA compliant or make sure that the LibGuide was ADA compliant by including captions on there as well. Um, and then ultimately submit them to us. In addition to um, you know, these resources that we gave them, um, we then also developed some workshops, um, I think during the second iteration of uh, the program, and that was in the fall of 2020. So um, that, that was something we added on for the second um, time that we did this. Uh, so we developed some workshops to kind of uh, guide students um, from the beginning of the, of the 
10 weeks um, through the completion of it. Um, so we tried to have them kind of like scaffolds and develop their skills and, and help them through the course of developing their project and the research um, that they had to conduct. And we were able to also record a few of those um, and then also post them here for students that weren't able to attend at that time. Um, and again, this is just in addition to what we were already providing and how we were already supporting our individual um, groups. Um, and we would, of course, you know, go over this again with them or had already maybe gone over it, but we just wanted to add this level of support um, for maybe some students that their schedules were a little tighter or maybe just weren't um, reaching out to us um, or responding to us when we reached out to them. Um, so, uh, so all this stuff that you guys are seeing was all in preparation um, for a live symposium, you know, that we had asynchronously. Uh, and, you know, the format of that symposium um, was, you know, we usually had it like on a Saturday and all the students would join via Blackboard. Um, and so the librarians, um, you know, we served as moderators to help, uh, you know, make sure that we address all the student questions. It was very interactive. Uh, we were also in charge of recording the sessions, as Christina mentioned, um, but also uh, we we really uh, managed the commenting feature that we really marketed during the event. So students were also able to asynchronously interact with the student project. So, you know, after a, a student ended up, you know, ended their presentation, we would tell them here is the link to their page and then they would scroll all the way at the bottom as Christina is doing. Uh, and then you would be able to see, uh, you know, their their comments or their their reactions. Uh, and so this is the hybrid talk uh, system that Caitlin was talking about earlier. Um, you know, it was it was kind of difficult also to get this one to work just because we needed a system that was uh, was able to protect our students' privacy, was ADA compliant, and was simple to use. And so through this method, um, you know, we used some creative HTML magic and we made it happen. Uh, and then in the back end, we were able to moderate comments. So basically, if a student created an account and logged in, they were able to post a comment without moderation. But if they went in anonymously, um, we just went in there and made sure to approve the comments, just you know, to prevent anybody from saying anything that was, you know, destructive or or negative. Or, I mean, we're not trying to suppress or or censor anybody, but at least you know, to make sure that the information was on topic, not just random. You know, there, there's also spam. Uh, there's random bots that also spam in there. So that really helped out with that. Um, and we had mentioned, um, you know, a few uh, challenges we had um, briefly, but um, just to, I guess, explain those a little bit more. Um, one of the challenges that we did experience um, during this project was um, just kind of connecting um, with our groups. So uh, the first the first iteration of this program, um, we actually the librarians were added on, um, I think, a few weeks already after the program had started. Um, I want to say, at least for me, that was um, the most the most challenging um, version of this program um, because of the faculty members and the students. They already had they had already met. They had already started their, their process. Um, they already had a plan. Um, and then we came in um, and that was actually something that um, was part of the feedback that was received from uh, faculty members uh, was that they would have appreciated having us um, be there at the very start of the program so that we were already part of that plan. Um, so for the second um, iteration of the program, uh, we did come in at the beginning. Um, we were part of those teams at the start. So we each got assigned a certain number of, of teams. Um, and I think that was that was appreciated. You could see that in the in the responses from the surveys that were um, given to the faculty and to the students. Um, there was uh, comments about how um, how they appreciated having us there, how uh, faculty members um, kind of saw the benefits of having a librarian there to assist with research, to share those those um, those research tips and and uh, just help students navigate all the resources as well. Um, and they also mentioned that they would be um, trying to incorporate that into their own um, classes, you know, later on um, outside of this program. Um, another thing we had uh, trouble with was, uh, I think, the form submission, right, Angel? Um, yeah, just getting, uh, you know, faculty to respond and, and students to respond is always difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we did what we could. We reached out to the faculty. The good thing is we had a coordinator for the whole program who helped us with pushing, um, you know, the, the faculty and the students to submit and to respond. But overall, 
uh, I, you know, it, it worked out. And, you know, from the feedback that we got, uh, it was very positive. As Christina said, the majority of students said they benefited a lot from having a librarian and faculty members really said that this kind of work was transformative. So, and I think we're, we're just out of time, right? Yes. So if we have any, any questions, uh, I guess we'll open it up to any questions.